It was the road answer from Rupert Murdoch and Roger Ailes whenever anybody pointed to Fox News and called it, well, what it is. Why belabor the point? Yeah, but we got Britt Hume at 6 o'clock. He's not partisan. He's not selling anything. He's not proselytizing. Oops. Tiger Woods will recover as a golfer. Whether he can recover as a person, I think, is a very open question, and, we're, and it's a tragic situation with him. I think he's lost his family. It's not clear to me that whether he'll be able to have a relationship with his children. But the, but the Tiger Woods that emerges once the news value dies out of this scandal, uh, the extent to which he can recover, it seems to me, depends on his faith. He's said to be a Buddhist. I don't think that faith offers the kind of forgiveness and redemption that is offered by the Christian faith. So my message to Tiger would be, Tiger, turn your faith, turn to the Christian faith, and you can make a total recovery and be a great example to the world. Wow! Uh, Hume's attempt to inject religion into a discussion of the Woods mess and then setting one religion as superior and more forgiving to another even got a mention from Don Imus on the Fox Out of Business channel, quoting, Well, we checked this morning, and unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, if you're a Buddhist, there is a path to recovery and redemption, right? Well, yes, there is. The idea of redemption, nirvana under Buddhism, is achieving the state of being freed from greed, hate, and delusion. Let's bring in activist Dan Savage, author of The Commitment, Love, Sex, Marriage, and My Family. Dan, good evening. Good evening, Keith. Wow, and the breaks of political correctness are applied on you by Don Imus. Uh, you're in trouble, but let me start with the premise. Being Christian is the best religion for adulterers because you can be forgiven, and we, we have lots of many fine examples of that, I suppose. We do. Mark Sanford, John Ensign, David Vitter. What's hilarious about it is there's Britt Hume on Fox News suggesting that people should be Christians or adulterous uh, straight men should be Christians, not because Jesus is the way and the light, not because Jesus is the son of God, not because it is the one true religion, but because it offers the best deal. It gives you the uh, get out of adultery free card that other religions just can't. Is that this, seems like an insult to Christianity, well, yeah, uh, my mother would point out. But all, so is, isn't this the classic thing that your mother probably also pointed out to you about never discussing religion in public? I mean, you can discuss religion in public. It's like this, you're not supposed to do it. This crosses that principle, keep religious advocacy out of public life, since, you know, the worst examples of that are, are jihadists, not to mention, you know, guys who don't know their own religions or somebody else's religion, like Brit Hume. What's really telling, though, is just as, you know, when we, I'm not comparing the American religious right to jihadists. Uh, they throw rhetorical bombs. The other guys throw real bombs. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. But whenever we have a discussion in our country about jihadism and uh, radical Muslims, you always hear, where are the moderate voices? Where are the moderate Muslims? Why don't they speak up? Where are the moderate liberal progressive Christians when something like this happens? Why don't they speak up in defense of their own faith? American Christianity has been hijacked by the lunatics, by the Pat Robertsons, and uh, the, by the Phelps family, by the Gary Bowers, uh, by the, and by people like Britt Hume. And it's an insult to Christianity. It's an insult to Christians. I'm not a Christian. I was a seminarian once upon a time. But I'd like to hear from moderate Christians, not just uh, radical sex advice columnist faggots about this. <laughs> I'd like to hear them speak up. WWJDIHS, which is what would Jesus do if he strayed? Uh, beyond the mere <laughs> advocacy of religion in public life, this notion that we can counter Religion fund, religious fundamentalists who, as you note aptly, are different from religious fundamentalists here. They want to blow us up, but somehow we can defend ourselves with our own vigorous religion. Is it, this is sort of Peter Pan quality here? If we all just think hard enough, our God can beat up their God? That has been going on, and that needs to be checked. General Boykin, who was one of the generals in charge of the invasion of Iraq, gave a speech where he said, our God is bigger than their God. And we've got to stop. We've got to de-escalate this rhetoric and the rhetorical war, pitting one religion against another religion, particularly as inoffensive a religion as Buddhism. Yes. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't heard any threats from radical Buddhists lately in this country. There, no, there are no Buddhists with bombs in their underpants on airplanes, I don't think. And... and uh, I'm not. I'm going to avoid a bomb in the underwear uh, joke about Tiger Woods, for God's sakes. But is it not in the interest of people of faith to avoid this kind of public proselytizing? I mean, the smart ones get that it just makes them look bad, no matter what the thought might be. Smart people of faith set an example uh, through their lives. They don't go on Fox News and bloviate and lecture other people and hector people. You know, Brit Hume is on his second marriage. Tiger Woods 
is on his first. Brittany really isn't in a position to be lecturing Tiger Woods about marriage or about the one true path or about the deal that Christianity offers adulterous men. Well, we, you know, I, I'm going to assume this is true. I haven't done any research on it, but I don't think Brit Hume used to be a Buddhist who then converted to, to some uh, Christian faith and, and found this path already. But if he did, and he is actually speaking from experience, I guess we owe him an apology, but I tend to doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it, too, very highly. Dan Savage, author of The Commitment. Great thanks for your time tonight, Dan. Thank you for having me, Keith. That's Countdown for this, the 2000th.